in Ohio District 12. The lead has gone back and forth, as Kristen said. Democrat Danny O'Connor and Republican Troy Balderson many, many times back and forth. Who was in the lead? Who wasn't? It is now coming down to Delaware County, which is leaning toward the Republican Balderson. Still too close to call. Time now for some expert analysis from tonight's political panel. Fox News contributor Byron York author of Outrage Inc., Derek Hunter, Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall, and Fox News radio host Todd Starnes. Welcome to all of you. Um, Hi. Hello, Shannon. Derek, I'll start with you. How much does this or doesn't this say about President Trump? He endorsed heartily. He won this district by 11 points, and tonight it's razor thin. I think this is more about the district. President Trump obviously helped. The polls just a few days ago showed it going the other way and momentum going the other way. But it... In the grand scheme of things, we're going to face off in less than three months. Right. Again, the, this, is a, this, this is a do-over. Uh, this is a setup by uh, I, the Democrats will declare victory no matter who actually wins. Right. It'll be a moral victory. It'll be a hollow victory, but a moral victory. But it'll be interesting to see whether or not they end up outside the half a percentage point mm -hmm. margin to avoid a manual recount. So we could end up having a recount and delay him being seated as a congressman mm -hmm. and then get the new election, the November election, that much closer. But it's, it's, it's a big for Republicans to hold this seat. I don't think it's that big of a deal because an election in August is never going to get massive turnout. Democrats are motivated. There's no doubt about that. So Republicans have to guard against that. But this is a, a def it has to be morally deflating for Democrats, too, because they really thought this was going, they were going to win. Well, but Byron, they have been managing expectations for weeks now, saying even if it's close, even if Balter Balderson does win, but it's within a point or two, that is a repudiation of President Trump his policies and everything about his administration. Well, there's no doubt that it is closer than it should have been. This is a district that's been uh, a Republican for more than three decades, and this should not have been this close. And w on the other hand, a win is a win. The Republicans have won, but it was kind of a near-death experience for them. <laughs> and I, ju I just got a statement from a man named Corey Bliss, who runs one mm -hmm. of the biggest outside groups, Congressional Leadership Fund. Mm -hmm. And you know, Balderson had not raised all that money by himself. Right, there were a lot he of had, outside he groups helping. A lot of outside money. And basically, this statement is a, a warning to other people. It said, "While we won tonight, this remains a very tough political environment. And moving forward, we cannot expect to win tough races when our candidates." is being outraised. Any Republican running for Congress getting vastly outraised by an opponent needs to start raising mm -hmm. more money. They're clearly worried that they're not yeah. in a great position. Uh, Leslie, fair to say that both sides are going to claim victory in what went down tonight in Ohio 12? Uh, yes, but uh, Byron, you're speaking facts, and I, I, and I love when we have facts, because this is really a numbers game, isn't it? And quite frankly, these should not be the numbers. I mean, obviously, the winner's the winner. Uh, we're going to see what happens again uh, in November in the real election, some would say. But when we look at what this will do, I think, to those in my party, I think it will encourage more to come out. And when we look at numbers, Shannon, when you look at just how many people Republicans had uh, in this constituency, in this district, there were so many any more Republicans here. And it's not just because it's gone to a Republican candidate. You're looking at the mere number of people who call themselves Republicans, have voted that way in the past. So you have a lot of Democrats that have come out. It'll be really interesting to see the exit polls. And I do think it is a victory uh, to have such a tight margin uh, for the Democrats. I honestly didn't think this was going to be one of the, I was hopeful. I didn't think this was going to be uh, one of the seats of the 23 that would make it 22. Uh, but I, I had said earlier today, if it's 2% or less Republicans are going to be talking in a back room and they're worried. Byron said they're worried. They, they know this is a, a tough uh, midterm coming up, and I agree with him. On yeah, that. and historically, it just absolutely is for the president in power. There's no question about that. Very few exceptions. Uh, as we wait to see the GOP contender here, Troy Balderson, take the stage, uh, I want to ask you quickly, uh, Todd, about this. Uh, the RNC says it would have made a big difference to have the president on the ballot. They say this is different. These special elections are different. Here's RNC chair Ronna McDaniel. District. I think no. these special elections are called special elections for a reason. There's only two candidates on the ballot. Turnout is a huge issue in August in Ohio, the week before school starts. Turning out that vote is going to be critical. And I will tell you, President Trump would win this district today, and he would win it in November. His what do you think, Todd? 
Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, this is another case of President Trump pulling a Republican candidate's fat out of the fire. Uh, the president won this race for Mr. Balderson, no doubt about that. Look, uh, th there is an issue, though. Uh, there, there's been a lot of concern about this enthusiasm gap, and we've all seen the polling on that. And the Republicans do need to treat this as a wake-up call and understand it's not a given that they're going to they're going to keep those numbers moving into the midterm elections. You know, another another issue here, though, is the Democrats. They've got real trouble on their hands. I imagine Ms. Ocasio-Cortez is going to be crying into her pillow tonight because, because the, 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 uh, the Democrat here, O'Connor, when you look at, at how he ran, he ran not as a progressive, a, one of those socialists, he ran as a, as a centrist, and that's a big problem for the Democrats. Yeah, it's interesting. He did uh, because he ran as somebody that was much more to the center, much more like we'd seen with Connor Lamb in Pennsylvania. Troy Balderson, now the GOP nominee uh, and presumed frontrunner at this point, is getting ready to take to the mic there in Ohio 12, a district where the president and vice president have both shown up to campaign for him. For now, he remains ahead outside the margin of what would trigger a recount. We're not fully in with all the results, but let's listen in to Balderson. Back to our panel now. Um, Byron, I want to start with you. What's the lesson tonight for Republicans? Uh, work really hard. Uh, if, if President Trump is popular in your district, See if you can get him to come uh, come visit, come uh, campaign for you. He said he's going to be doing it pretty much 24/7 as we uh, head head toward the uh, uh, um, the midterm elections. But for more Republicans who are in these suburban areas, areas that are really close, maybe Trump won Hillary, maybe Hillary Clinton won by a little bit. Those are very difficult balancing acts to work with the president. Support the president where he's in traditional Republican policies and kind of distance yourself in other ways. It's a tough act to, to pull off. Derek, quickly I want to ask you, uh, the author, author of this new book, Outrage and can you talk about um, the resistance and the left and the frustration and the anger? Um, those folks showed up tonight, I have a feeling, in a they big did. way. There is an enthusiasm gap. Yeah. Make, make no mistake about it. This was an August election. Looking at those turnout numbers and the vote totals, it, there's a lot of people showed up. I think Donald Trump made the difference coming in in the last minute. But he can't be everywhere. He's, he plans on ca campaigning five six to six days a week, days a week yeah. but he still can't be everywhere all the time. People are going to have to find, candidates are going to have to find a reason to inspire voters on their own, not just through President Trump. There, there is a silver lining for Republicans tonight that the shines a little off the diamond. The three candidates endorsed by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders, who they campaigned for, all lost their primaries. Mm -hmm. So the, the wind might be coming a little bit out of the sails of the Democratic Socialist movement at the same time, which could depress some of the enthusiastic turnout on the left. Yeah, Leslie, what do you make of that? Because she's been heralded is such a rising star, but there have been a number of Democrats within the party leadership who've said, don't pin all your hopes on her. We, the entire party is not going to work going that far left in all districts. It's just not going to work just like President Trump may not work in all districts. Uh, uh, absolutely. Like, you know, I've said before, what, what works in the Bronx isn't going to work in certain areas like Ohio's 12th district, for example. And that's why you see candidates like this. That's why you see candidates like Danny, you see candidates like uh, Connor Lamb, and you have to. And you see that on the right as well. There are people that are more moderate. There are people that are more evangelical in the Republican Party. And the same is on the left. I, you know, I'm not surprised that some of these far left leaning socialist, if you will, uh, factions of the Democrat Party are aren't you know, working in some of these flyover states, if you will, and aren't as successful. Just when you look at the demographics, uh, they do work better in a more diverse, uh, multicultural uh, mm -hmm. community or district like the Bronx, uh, a heavy minority district like the Bronx, and also uh, millennials. So in a state like I am in, in, in California, yeah. uh, those two are going to play much better in some of these other states where primaries were held today. Very quick final word to you, Todd. We're going to check in on some other states as well. Yeah, look, I think the lesson here is for the establishment Republicans to get on board, stop trying to sabotage President Trump. He is the president. It's time to get on board. And as, as far as these Democrats go and the, and the socialists, you had Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders out in Kansas trying to convert the Kansans uh, to socialism. You'd have a better shot of converting them to uh, vegetarianism out there uh, than socialism. It's just not going to work. All right, we are going to try to give you an update on those races as well in these other states. Uh, Todd and Leslie, Byron and Derek, thank you very much.